So hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. You too. So we always start with the typical question. How did you end up in Bitcoin? What is your journey? The first time I heard the word Bitcoin, actually saw the word Bitcoin, I was actually in Tokyo, of all places. And it was in really big letters on the front page of a newspaper. And I thought that was so strange. A respected newspaper, like talking about this monopoly money. And so that made me very curious. Uh, I actually have a, an academic background, kind of um, scientific aspects, the research aspects uh, kind of caught my attention while I was doing the research. In particular, basically Bitcoin was solving the Byzantine generals problem, which is the problem, the double spend problem. So how do you trust someone that you don't know on the other side of the internet that they could send you money and they're not sending the same money someone else? Bitcoin found a solution for that. It was previously unsolved. I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. And I thought, it's important. Now you can have money on the internet. And I didn't know if Bitcoin at the time would be what takes off or not, but I knew this is going to be something really important. And that was really, so quite quickly, I started down the rabbit hole and started call, free falling. When was it? Yeah. As in 2013. 2013, wow. So early. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny though, like even then, if you go online and like social media or, or forums or whatever, people are already saying, oh, we're too late, we're too late. Yeah. And you know, four years later, when there's another bubble, people say, oh, we're too late, we're too late. Four years later, there's another bubble, people are saying, too late, too late. And even now, and I think still now, we're very, very early. But even from an adoption standpoint, we are so early. Exactly. Nobody yeah. using Bitcoin. We are in our bubble. It seems yeah. like everybody is talking about this, but for yeah. now, it's not yeah, the case. Exactly. It's going to be special. Yeah. And so right now, you're developing a solution, Bitbox, yes. a Switzerland company. What is it? What is the difference between your uh, solution and uh, something like Ledger that uh, much people know? So it's a hardware wallet, similar to Ledger, similar to Trezor. We've been around since uh, 2015. Uh, so we, we have some pretty good traction in the German-speaking market, but outside of that, not too many people have heard of us, so that's slowly changing. And we think we have some good advantages over, over the others. And so when it comes to hardware wallets, there's two main aspects. One is usability, and the other is security. In terms of usability, we, we spend a lot of time, a lot of effort on both. And usability, we get really, really great reviews, and something we're very proud of is a lot of people come to us and say, this is the hardware wallet I'll give to my family. So I think, you know, that feels good. We, we made an achievement there. And then in terms of security, we do something that we call um, the best of both worlds. We take what we think Trezor does good, we take what we think Ledger does good, and merge it into something that we think is quite special. And so uh, Trezor, for example, they have open source uh, code. We think that's extremely important for security, also in terms of accountability, so people can keep us accountable because everything we do is out there in the open. Yeah. The problem with that, though, is if you don't have a secure element like Ledger, then you're susceptible to uh, physical attacks. So if someone steals your hardware wallet, you could lose your, your coins. So Ledger has a secure element, which is really great. It's a very good thing. And that protects against physical theft. The problem with that is the code is closed source. You need to trust them, and, and there's a lot of under, other underlying problems with that. So what we do is we have a fully open source code base running on a... Uh, microcontroller, miniature computer. We also have a secure element that we use in a, in a special unique way, a trustless way, where we use it purely to harden access to the device. And so you still get the physical protection properties. If someone steals it, uh, you're still protected, but we can run everything in a, an open source way, a transparent way, in a way trying to minimize the need to, to trust ourselves. To get your device, we need to to go to our, to your website, or do you have any physical uh, place? Or yeah, we have uh, our own website, so a lot of people go there. Okay. Uh, we do have a network of resellers uh, around the world, yeah. and we do have a few physical shops, so in Zurich, in Lyon, in France, Nashville, Tennessee, okay. <laughs> and some other places. Cool. You can find all of that on our on our website. Okay. So, you have any advice for a guy that want to start his Bitcoin journey, learn things, and get into it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the best thing to do is just jump in. Yeah. You know, take take a few few euros, a uh, few sat, uh, and just experiment and play with it. A lot of people are, uh, I guess, hesitate because it's it's a new concept. There's new words, new jargon. But if you actually use it, you'll be surprised how easy it is. And part of our job as a company is to make it even easier to do it in a very safe way. Like you can buy a Bitbox, for example. If you don't have any Bitcoin, and inside of our own app, you can buy Bitcoin. You can get started from ground zero with uh, full security. And uh, yeah, there's lots of places you can learn online. We also provide a lot of educational content. Uh, you can sign up for a newsletter, for example. We have a nice intro series for people to get uh, oriented.
Okay, so cool. Thanks for your time. <laughs> You're nice welcome. Thank you. Bye.